she was diagnosed. And although awareness about children with autism has been growing for quite some time now, the situation can be very different for adults. 70% of autistic adults say that they aren't getting the help that they need from social services. One in three autistic adults experience severe mental health difficulties due to a lack of support. And only 16% of autistic adults is in full-time paid work. Well, Kevin Healy was 27 when he was diagnosed with autism and has been a leading campaigner for the last 17 years. And earlier, I asked him what it was like being diagnosed when he was already an adult. Yeah, very late in life. Uh, I've got a twin brother who's identical, he's non-verbal. He didn't get diagnosed until he was 18. I got diagnosed at the age of 27 and I'm now 44. So it was a, a very long process and very difficult to get diagnosed. I had to go down to Cambridge to see a Professor Simon Baron Cohen to get, to get my diagnosis. So it's very difficult for children to get diagnosed. I always believe in it in early intervention, it's so crucial. So children need to be diagnosed around the age of three to five, not late in life, you know, like Anne, she wasn't diagnosed until 44. Some people I speak to don't get diagnosed until the 50s or even in the 60s. I mean, why do you think that is? Why do you think when it comes to, to dealing with autism, it, the diagnosis can come so late? I think it's a number of things. I think it's lack of understanding, lack of awareness. I think if you're in the right key set where professionals can see that there's something wrong, then you know they can do that key steps to get that diagnosis and a lot quicker. As we see throughout the UK at the moment, people are waiting from you know minimum uh, 12 months, even two to three years before they even get that diagnosis. You know, some people it can take so long and then it can have a number of effects, not just on the individual, even on family members as well. So I think it's so important to get that early diagnosis. I mean, talking to you, Kevin, I mean, if I can say this, I don't see any telltale signs, if I can call it that. But when it comes to your autism, just, just how are you autistic? Yeah, and that's that's quite an interesting question because when people say they can speak, they can speak articulate and they can make eye contact, that you you may not be on the autistic spectrum. That's you know a lot of people do say that, but for me, my autism affects me in many different ways: sensory issues, uh, being understood. Sometimes somebody can say something to me and I can't interpret that information. So for people being on the spectrum, everybody's unique. And if we look at Anne Egerty, who's, you know, who's in the jungle at the moment now, she's very what I call savant, I'm not savant, so she's got a, a, a brain which can hold massive amount of information and very, very highly intelligent, like, uh, like genius level. Uh, I'm not a genius level, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, Autism affects also many people in many different ways. So not one person with autism is exactly the same. You know, when we, the film Rain Man, uh, you know, everybody thinks that people with autism are all the Rain Man, and that's not true. I created a film last year, it's called Twin Brothers World Apart, and it's based on myself and my twin brother, Sean. And basically that shows the misconceptions in the early 1980s where myself and my twin wasn't understood and also you know people not understanding mine and my twin's condition so i think we've come a long way since the 80s but i think there's still a lot more work to do a lot you know around professionals doctors to even doctors don't really understand what autism is if you go along to the doctor and you may say you present yourself like you're on the autistic spectrum they might may not know until they you know, transfer you on to clinicians who can actually diagnose that person. And that's so shocking that doctors themselves even struggle with something like this. Um, in terms of the, the discrimination that you faced and indeed other adults living with autism, what kind of discrimination can, can people face? They can come into a number of uh, categories such as bullying, hate crime offences. I was picked on, I was bullied when I was at school and even into, you know, middle adult or late adulthood, I was bullied on social media online. So a lot of people who are on the spectrum uh, can also have mental health conditions, uh, comorbid conditions, so they can have other related conditions around their autism. So they may not be diagnosed with autism, but they can have other overlapping conditions as well. And it's such a, it's just such a complex condition. 
you know, there, there is more awareness out there now, but I think we still have a long way to go.